Hi, welcome to Far From Eden. It's good to have you guys here. I'm a little off tonight just because I'm gonna blame it on a woman. I'm gonna blame it on a woman, you guys. Remember my video, if you guys saw it last year, talking about how I had a home visit for my health insurance, whatever, and I chose a man because I bet most of the time people are like, I prefer women. So I chose a man because I thought he probably doesn't get as much work. I asked him that question when he came and it's actually true. Also, he was here about five minutes early. He was ready to go, super organized, do, 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 we're good. Today, totally different story. First of all, I tried to request a man. There weren't any working in this area, but when I tried to request one, the lady on the phone actually got this weird nervous laugh. Like she didn't quite know what to do with herself. It was, it was unsettling. I still haven't figured out what that was all about. Um, and I even told her, Hey, I know that, you know, I know they don't get as much work. So I did have a female today. And while she seemed to know what she's talking about, I had a window between 12 and four and she shows up at four and tells me I can't find your building, but I've been here before. Anyway, <sighs> but I'm a hypocrite because everybody at my physical therapy office is a woman and they do a great job. However, her mother and father started the company. So I don't know, but I'm excited because I, I've been watching these debates <laughs> between a uh, feminist and Andrew Wilson, right? He's got several debates. I may have been binge watching some, but this happened on the whatever podcast, this particular debate. There's been two recently. This is the one with the girl with the lighter hair. And there's a clip. Anyway, it's just, it's just wonderful because sometimes people will absolutely demonstrate the thing that you're like, that's what they do. That's the, that's the bad thing that they do. And they just, anyway, it's about moral relativism. And I think this is a huge problem in our society, particularly women have this issue. And I've talked about it, like us lacking principles and just not being principled because it's, you'll hear this all the time. Well, it depends on the situation. Actually, no, right and wrong doesn't depend on the situation. That's just a way to manipulate your way out of it so that you never do anything wrong and it's never your fault. I'm sure this sounds familiar to you guys. So they can justify anything. So when you're looking, you find yourself in family court and you're looking over at this woman who was at one point in time, your blushing bride, even if she didn't have much to blush about. You know, and then all of a sudden it's just like this uh, person. And like, where did that come from? Well, it's just because of this and because of that. And there, this is there where it gets very twisted is the moral relativism. And I just thought this clip demonstrates it so well. This girl gets so owned. I'm not even sure she fully understands how bad it looks for her. I don't know if she gets it. Like, I, I don't think she does. She is younger and Andrew Wilson, I don't agree with him on everything and that's fine, but he does know how to debate. Um, especially when it's, you know, it's going up against, they just, it's Dunning-Kruger. They think they know so much because they're in college. It's like, oh, well, I'm getting my degree and my professor said this. And it's like, lady, you don't know anything about the world at all. So without further ado, let's share the screen. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> it never gets old. I like to see these people who are wrong, basically, you know, get what's coming. I guess I have to scooch over here. <laughs> That's new. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to move the computer. It's like, I have a camera in it. Oh, I guess we have to adjust. Sorry, peoples. I am, oh, look, look at that. I, I guessed right. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
you can press the space bar and it should work, right? Patriarchy. I mean, do you view that women are oppressed? I think absolutely globally. I, I don't know mm. how much I feel that that applies in the United States today, but globally, absolutely. Um. Patriarchy. I mean, do you view that women are oppressed? I think absolutely globally. I, I don't know mm. how much I feel that that applies in the United States today, but globally, absolutely. And Andrew, do you think that women are oppressed in the well, United States? Well, it depends States? on what we would consider oppression to be. Right. Well, let's start there. How do you, how do you define oppression? I would say probably the unjust like wielding of power by one group over another to, to prevent them from acting in their free will. I'm sorry I have to do this, but I do have to get a little bit into your presupposition there. Mm -hmm. um, what is justice? I mean that that is a that's a philosophical debate. I I well, but you're appealing to it. Yeah, I would say that justice is at its very like core definition, probably just closer to the definition of equality, like equal treatment. So anything Someone, which yeah. is unequal is a practice. I'm sorry. You knew it's not like she was kidnapped and she didn't know she was showing up for a debate. She can't define oppression. She's not sure. She's not even sure if it is in the United States. How do you show up for a debate on feminism? And your your whole point is, I'm guessing you're pro-feminism, and so you believe the patriarchy is an oppressive force. You believe that women are oppressed, right? And you're not prepared to answer, well, what is oppression? What is justice? What is uh, not prepared at all? And he's being very gentle. I really, I think he's being quite gentle. He's like, I hate to do this, but. And okay, so she's not prepared. That doesn't have to do with the moral relativism. But the thing is that it is Dunning-Kruger. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. And you think you've got it all figured out. And you're so far off base. And it's, we're only talking about basic things in life. And she can't. Hmm. depends on what you mean by unequal i guess like if two people well, you believe that egalitarian perform unequally like on a test like no i don't think that would be oppression so then okay so then i what is justice you know honestly i don't think i have a good definition for for justice in the in the i'm curious what your definition of justice is well <laughs> For me, I would I would make an appeal to uh, Christian ethics mm. in order to make a determination of what is or is not just. But in your case, right, you don't mm. have anything that you can appeal to, do you? You just appeal to what? Nothing. No, but I mean, don't you think that's kind of a cop out that you can say, "Oh well, well, God told me what what justice is. It's Christian ethics." Oh, but you can't. Do, how how could you ever say that it's my justification is not good enough? For you who has no justification <laughs> that is fair if you're talking about me directly um uh, for, for all all of it will reduce to um essentially relativism from your end absent any type of religion is going to be relativism there is no moral standard you're going to be able to appeal to i think that's true okay go ahead and try to appeal to a standard that's not relativism like a, a moral standard i think minimizing harm that's relative. What's harm? Well, I, yeah. She had no idea. Like, she had no idea. She's just guessing stuff. She's coming at this from, from nowhere. And yet, so stubborn and unwilling to bend. Do you know what I mean? She's still going to be right. She's still going to be right, darn it. I mean, she's not being nasty, so that's something. The other one, the dark-haired one, is a little less reasonable. But this is how we end up at moral relativism, because they think, they think they have morals. They don't understand that those morals just depend on their feelings and the situation. 
they don't understand that that can't, that's not a framework. It, there is no frame. You have no way to say this is right. You have no reason. And it doesn't have to be Andrew Wilson's reason or my reason, but wouldn't you say there has to be some framework of why? Why you believe this is right and this is wrong? And she's got nothing except to say, oh, no, I don't think that, I, that I'm a moral relativist. <laughs> well, explain how you're not. It's just so enjoyable for me to watch this. There's something probably wrong with my brain. But I just love it. I had to share it. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah, I would take more thought. But, I mean, what, what is the Christian, like, moral standard? The Christian moral standards, divine command, and this is based on um, the understanding that knowledge itself cannot exist absent God. It's an X to Y argument. So it would say the the argument, it would be. Rose donated $200. Brian, this layout is awesome. These would be great to consider having more of with you mediating slash asking questions between two guests. Yeah. Thank you, Rose. Yes, I, I want to do more of these whatever debate formats. We've done a few in the past. And uh, thank you, Rose. Appreciate the TTS. Continue. Okay. So in, in any case, regardless of what I would appeal to, even if I said I appeal to a flying spaghetti monster in the sky, I really don't have to justify that if the, there's no justification on your end for what is a moral standard. I don't have to justify mine then either. Why would I need to? If we're both just in relativism, then anything that I assert as being correct is just as valid as anything you assert as being correct. Okay, but I, I mean... Watch her misunderstand what he just said. So would you agree that what I'm asserting, it, it, anything I can assert can be just as correct as what you're asserting? If it's absent a justification, there just wouldn't be a reason for me to justify. So then what I would need to do then is appeal to force. <laughs> and so if I were to make an appeal to force, we've already established that we have the monopoly on force and you can't make a moral argument because you're a relativist. Where are we left? I mean, so do you discount any secular? Hang on, hang on. Answer my question. Sorry. Ask the question again. Where are you left if you're a relativist? You can only appeal to relativism. My worldview has to be just as valid as yours. So then therefore we both appeal to physical force. What else could we ever appeal to? I honestly, I am not totally sure how how we get from there to to appealing to physical force. Because, yeah, and women don't, and that's how you end up with communism. I feel like, even though I don't drink, that's a drinking game. Every time I bring up communism, because if I'm talking long enough, I'm probably going to start talking about communism. But I mean, that's just it, you know communists don't have a basis for what's right and wrong it's they'll say it's for the greater good okay what's good who does that decides what's good who decides how that's implemented etc cetera, etc cetera. oh the state these women just they just march it right they'll march they'll march their families into divorce court they'll march their countries into communism and it starts here. This is why this clip just was so impactful to me. Because I'm like, here it is right here on display. She doesn't even understand really what she's saying. She doesn't really understand what moral relativism is, at least from, from the things she's saying, you know? And she definitely doesn't understand the danger and the chaos that it creates and how if you're a relativist, then anything goes, just anything. You just make it up. She's not getting it. She's just not getting it. What else could you appeal to other than just an enforcement to your preferences? Appeal to for what? To, for like for any, for for any for... ought. Every ought would just become force. You would just say the things I want to see different in the world are because I want to see them different in the world. And then that would require force. So you would relativism will reduce to a forced doctrine. But 
Well, I'm curious why Christian ethics wouldn't also reduce to a forced doctrine. Well, the Christian ethic w can make a determination between an is and an ought. So we would make the ought claim that you should not utilize force to, for it, what we would consider oppression, which is hardly patriarchy. That's not oppressive. Um, but yeah, we would make a justified moral claim. And that's how we would uh, move forward in a moral conversation or in not. But from your case, it's total and complete relativism. And you know it's relativism. Whatever worldview you come up with, absent religion, is going to reduce to relativism. And so we're just going to be right back to force again. I mean, what, what if God isn't real? Then I do you have think this, that, do you think that has, has any effect on... the same justification you do to appeal to force. So could I not make up my own thing that tells me what, what is right and wrong and I can lead back to that. It won't be relativism because I that have would this be relativism, thing that's, yeah. I'm, I'm curious how that's different from saying that it comes from God. Because from there's philosophical command. proofs for God. If there's no philosophical proofs that you could present for whatever your flying spaghetti monster is, then we would reject it. I, I don't know if we want to get I'm, I'm actually curious what the philosophical proofs that, that God exists would be well, or you mean philosophical we, proof that before yeah. we get into yeah a, that might be a little yeah, before we would get into a philosophical proof though just remember i don't have to justify one because you don't have to justify one so there's no in other words coming to me and asking me can you make a justification for a thing which i can't justify why would i need to do that we would just assume immediately that you disbelieve whatever my justification would be right because you don't hold it right so you don't believe it so if that's the case, we're still going to be reduced to just appealing a force again. Okay, well then that puts us on equal equal footing with our with our. If ethics. it puts us on equal footing with our ethics, and both mm -hmm. of us are appealing to force, then ultimately, if men decide to utilize force in order, and they have the monopoly on force, you can't make a single moral argument for why that would be wrong. So you you disagree that patriarchy is oppression? Yeah. Okay, but but hang on before we move the goal. Wow, she just flew right past that, and he said. You can't make a single statement or whatever he said that that what I'm doing is wrong. He didn't mean one can't make that statement. You can't. You can't in particular, lady, because you don't have a framework for this is right and this is wrong. And here's why. She doesn't get it. She thinks he means the collective you. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I don't know. Terrible. Goalpost. No, that was that was a question. How, yeah, okay, no, and I'll sorry. answer the question, but I asked you one first, mm -hmm. and the question I asked was, if it is true that we've reduced it all to relativism, if it is true that all we can do now is appeal to force, and if it is true that men have the monopoly on force, then if men used their force monopoly to oppress women. You couldn't make a single moral argument against that, could you? I th I think that you could. Then do then do so. I I did not come prepared with a moral argument, honestly, but I think that there are philosophers and and people who are okay. experienced at debating. But you who couldn't. Could. I couldn't know. Okay. Patriarchy. I that was the whole point. You couldn't see. She thought he meant the collective view. That I don't think that's how he speaks. Ah, uh, that's so funny. To me, it's so satisfying. Uh, there are even more satisfying ones. However, I think because it's that moral relativism thing. That's why I fixated on this video and wanted to share it with you guys and watch it with you guys. Because it's, it's the root of so much that's wrong in our society. Is women being moral relativists. And there are women who go to church and claim to be Christians and claim da, 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 but they still operate as if right and wrong depends on the situation, you know? And I think when it comes down to it with marriage, that's the thing about marriage is you're making vows to a higher authority whether that's God or the state, you are promising to make this bond till death do you part. No one's forcing you to say that. You're agreeing to it. However, why, did, why then do they break it? 
well reasons and excuses and I'm not happy and blah, 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 and he's not ambitious enough or whatever the reasons and excuses are, right? I'm sorry. But you said, till death do us part. You said, in sickness as in health. You said, for better or for worse. You promised. They have to twist it in their brain about how technically he broke the promise first because he da 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 da, da and it's different in my situation. It's moral relativism. We, I will admit it, we women are, it's like, it's almost like we've developed it as a skill because we get away with it. And we just change definitions and change, you know, what our promises meant, depending on the situation, depending on our feelings. And I just thought this, this young lady, uh, she did a really good job demonstrating that. Hopefully she'll look at it. I know, I know, I know, I'm Pollyanna. But in my world, she'll look at it and she'll be like, oh, wow, you know, he has a really good point there. Why do I not, you know, but she's not, she's probably just going to be like, oh, well, he was just trying to win the debate. And I mean, that's more than likely what she'll do. And she won't reflect and consider the fact that she might be wrong. It isn't just, it isn't just lady that you're unprepared or that, and although that is embarrassing, it's not just that you're unprepared. It's that you're grossly misinformed and you're utterly lacking in a real like conscience personally and utterly lacking in the idea of this is right and this is wrong and this is why and i'm not sitting here telling you that you have to have my worldview of what's right and what's wrong and why but it boggles my mind that people are just like making it up as they go along or saying it's whatever's legal it's like or it's whatever we've commonly decided upon. It's like, you know what? A bunch of people can be wrong. And this is how we're marching towards communism because they don't see it. And they're, they have, they're carrying the, the torch of moral relativism for the state. And the state's like, yes, that's what we want because we are about to unleash, well, they already are, but they're gonna decide what's right and what's wrong and they're gonna have their own reasons. And that's how you end up with, you know, the 100 million people by Mao and what, I don't know, 60, 80 million by Stalin. I mean, we really don't even know. Pol Pot, like, you know, yeah, the guy with the funny mustache in Germany, he killed a lot of people and that was bad. But he's not even like in the top two. It's the, it's the moral relativists and the, you know, it all has to be equal and it can be a utopia and all the rest of it. And it starts with this sort of a mindset. But first, this mindset breaks up the family. Can you imagine? Oh, my goodness gracious, you guys. Can you imagine you're, you're teaching little kids, right? Say I'm imagining myself ha as a mom. Say I've got, like I don't know, in my perfect world, if I could do my life over, I could have a, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old, and a six-year-old. And we're all right there. And... I'm teaching, you know, the very beginnings of right and wrong and why, like you shouldn't lie and you, and you share and you don't hurt. I'm going to teach them this is right and this is wrong and this is why. That's not what's happening. And this is another reason why single motherhood is a big problem because we need the structure in society. We need the structure in the family. This is what's good. This is what's bad. This is how we're going to operate. 
and without that chaos anyway thank you for indulging me in watching this this uh, little clip of a debate it was I don't know, highly enjoyable to me. The original clip, the link to the original clip will be in the description. And um, uh, I don't know. Thank you guys. I love you. And I want you guys to have a good rest of the day and take care of yourselves. Do something that feeds your soul. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Take care.